started off just selling the pumice nests and it, we gave birth to the uh, what's it called we gave birth to the habitat series and it's just been really such a great thing uh, a lot of great things to uh, look forward to on today's show we'll be featuring the formicidae of the day we're going to take a look at Campanotis novaborakensis ants, also known as red carpenter ants and their care, as well as watch a live feeding towards the end. Also on the show, we were able to interview master student in the Renewable Resource Department at the University of Alberta, who studies ant habitat associations and biodiversity. We'll be interviewing James Glacier, and he's going to talk to us about his work on cataloging new ant species for antweb.org and uh, what to expect in a career working in myrmecology for those of you guys who are looking into uh, possibly working with ants on a professional level. We'll also be finally revealing the details on our global ant nursery. Totally amazing thing. This is great. It's a long-awaited ant colony adoption program which ant lovers all over the world can benefit from. We also will be revealing a new color being added to our Habitat Nest series. And finally, uh, towards the end of the show, we'll be answering all your ant questions in the ant chat. So uh, feel free to sign in to Ustream to, uh, to chat with us. Very interesting show coming up. Uh, so be sure to stay tuned till the end. Now, uh, so let's get going. Now the feature ant for this show is uh, Camponotis. Novaborakensis, that's the scientific name, of course, of the red carpenter ants. And uh, you can see them here. Now, they're also known as the New York carpenter ants, I guess because they're pretty prevalent in New York, but are uh, of, uh, they're found in a lot of places. Uh, Toronto, of course, which is why we have them. Um, and they even go as far as Calgary, uh, Calgary and Alberta, which is amazing. Uh, now, they're a very easy species to keep. Uh, they're fully claustral and monogenous, so the queens, when you catch them during nuptial flight, you basically stick them into a test tube setup uh, solo, and they are able to uh, give rise to a colony. The nuptial flights, of course, take place uh, May-August, um, and uh, you mostly catch them during May. Um, some of them, the nuptial flights in August are a little sporadic, but May is their main nuptial flight. Uh, they nest in and around dead wood, especially the softwoods, you know, the uh, coniferous types of wood. Their colonies get fairly large, about 30,000 workers. Uh, you see here, there's the queen. Uh, they're kind of droning around the queen here. Um, and uh, the nest temperature, best nest temperature is 23 to 27 degrees Celsius. Uh, their outworld is 20 to 30 degrees Celsius as well. Um, they nest well in our habitat nest series and do well in our habitat outworlds. Now, you'll see that in a second here. A lot of the Camponotis found in North America um, are fairly the same in terms of care. Um, and I'm, I'm talking about the, uh, the arboreal species here, Pencil, you know, Camponotis pennsylvanicus um, and species like that. The, the care is generally the same. You see them here. You see that one worker with an egg in her mouth. This colony was hibernated for uh, three months, and so the queen has begun to lay eggs now, and she's doing uh, very well. And you see here, this is them in the outworld. Slices of apple, a piece of orange there in the background, and they love it. They love sweets. Um, they'll take mealworms and crickets uh, for food, and uh, really interesting species to keep very easy to care for and I love them they're just they're just great now all of this information of course was taken from the ant database in our FAQ section at antscanada.com which by the way if you notice a species you may have had success with in the past that is not in our ant database feel free to write to us and let us know be sure to also click on our helpful ant dictionary which contains all the terms and names you may have heard here all right. Great. See that there? Look at them. They're just such a neat species. So, there you go. Uh, red carpenter ants, Car Campanotis novaborakensis for you. Now, <clears throat> this week we also were able to 
uh, interview a very prominent individual um, making huge waves in the world of myrmecology uh, here in Canada and his name is James Glacier and he has it, his story is amazing you'll hear it basically they originally thought that Alberta had 40 species of ants um, and this student uh, during his research actually discovered that there were many more species um, and he, he created a key um, and it's just totally totally amazing so here is uh, our interview with none other than the Ant-Man himself James Glacier hope you enjoy it hello everybody Ants Canada here as you know we interview very prominent individuals in the world of ant keeping and uh, biology and today we have a very very special guest He's actually a Canadian. He also happens to catalog for AntWeb.org. He's a master's student at the Renewable Resources Department at the University of Alberta. Joining us today, live from Alberta, is none other than James Glacier. James, are you there? Yeah, hi. Excellent. Great to see you. Thanks again for uh, participating in this interview. I know a lot of our viewers um, were looking forward to this and uh, hearing what you have to say. Of all the animals um, to study, why did you choose ants? Um, I chose ants probably because, uh, one, I've always found them really interesting to watch. They're always interesting to watch how they cooperate together, how they uh, are always digging and always working. And uh, they're also just really uh, interesting uh, to, to look at structurally. I just find them very beautiful as insects. Awesome, that's excellent. Now, your story is amazing, James. Um, I don't know if uh, I told you how we um, came across you. Uh, our CEO is based in Calgary, Alberta, yep. and you, of course, are from Edmonton, Alberta. And he saw an article in the paper, <laughs> in uh, the Calgary paper, mentioning about your story. Now, mm -hmm. um, you've been making waves and doing totally great stuff. You've discovered that there are actually many more species of ants in Alberta than was initially thought. Tell us, tell us more about that. Well, when I first started my uh, research, uh, I, I, I'm a master's student at the University of Alberta, and uh, when I first started my research, uh, it was only thought to be for Alberta to have about 40 species of ants. And as I was going through uh, the ant specimens I, was, uh, I had, I started realizing there was a whole lot more. And uh, I, at first I couldn't identify all of them, so I had to start going through and identifying more and more. And I found that there was actually about 89, more spe uh, 89 species of ants instead of the, the known 40. That's excellent. And so um, I understand you created a species key. You kind yeah, of yeah. Well, uh, I I started uh, making a key that I'm hoping to publish uh, once I've got my research uh, further. And uh, I needed that key to help me uh, identify the ants faster instead of uh, going through from key to key that already exists. I see. Now, um, about identifying species, I understand sometimes it can be very subtle differences. How exactly um, do you go about identifying, you know, distinguishing uh, another species from, you know, from, from the rest? Because I, I, I know that sometimes the, um, the differences can be very uh, difficult to detect. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. To uh, identify between uh, different species can be sometimes really difficult. You have to look at specific... Uh, structures that you find on the ant, and uh, that can be, uh, usually you have to use a microscope, mm -hmm. and then you have to look at like the, the types of hair, or setae, on, or hairs on the, the body or leg, or the structures, um, the shapes of the structures on the on the thorax or on the abdomen, or even on the petioles that will yep. tell you. The waist segment, right? Yeah, the waist segment, or even on the uh, antennae. And on the antennae, I see. Yeah. Excellent. And I guess there's just like a global standard or a, a key that helps you identify this? Yeah, there, there, <clears throat> there are lots of keys kind of spread out uh, in different publications. And so I, I was using lots of different keys to try to figure out which species uh, I had. Mm -hmm. And then as I used those keys, I thought that it would be a lot easier if I compiled them all and created my, my own type of key to help me... Uh, you identify things faster. That's wonderful. That's totally great. Now, 
when you um, collect these specimens, um, you obviously don't realize uh, right away that they might be new, or do you? Um, well, in, in, in the field, when you're in the field collecting, um, sometimes you specifically collect by hand, or uh, I use, sometimes I, have to, I use tracks to uh, use a way that, that's uh, similar every time. I see. So it's a random select, uh, sampling system. And when I use the random sampling system, I don't know what I'm going to be getting. But you can sometimes know, uh, like, if you've looked at the specimens a lot and everything, you can sometimes tell if you have something that you haven't found before, especially especially if it's a, a type of ant that uh, um, you haven't seen before. Like, uh, there's one piece of ant in Alberta that before we didn't know existed here, and it's really unique. It, it's called the Lycoderis um, cashinberga, and oh. it actually uh, covers its nest with workers in the morning to gain uh, heat from the sun. And they're very, very shiny, so they're very unique. That's um, and you, you, when we hadn't seen them before, when we, when we saw them, it was very unique to see them, and we were able to almost right away know it was something new. Wow, that's, that's great. Now, what kind of um, geographical area do you cover when you're sampling um, different species? Like, how far uh, do you sample, James? Um, well, sometimes it can be uh, a very uh, small area. Usually for my research areas, we're only covering uh, uh, a limited area, a natural area that uh, is uh, provincial parks and stuff like that. So they're very small, only a few kilometers uh, wide. But for uh, when I'm, when I'm uh, looking for just biodiversity of Alberta, it's kind of wherever I'm traveling, I collect ants. So it can be a very wide area range that I'm looking at. I see. So in a small area like the, the park you were saying, how many uh, species uh, would exist in, in a small area like that? Well, I, I work in sand hills, which are uh, overgrown sand dunes that are dominated by jack pine trees. Mm -hmm. And these areas are actually very high in ant diversity. In, in a, an area of uh, that's only 20 by 50 meters, I can have uh, up to 14 different species of ants. Wow, that's incredible. What does that mean when there, what do you find that means when there's a lot of species in a smaller area? Um, well, when there's a lot of species in a small area, it means the area is very uh, heterogeneous, which means uh, it's very uh, complex in uh, structure, in habitat structure. And so that allows for different types of ants to fill in different types of uh, niches. And so a lot of times what's happening is uh, you'll have um, two or three types of carpenter ants that are living in different types of trees, and then there'll be different types of ants living in uh, different parts of the, the soil uh, areas, and you'll have some in dead wood and so on and so forth. And then usually that the, the few ants that add just those extra to make the higher uh, species count are actually ants that are living in other ant nests. Oh, wow, like symbiotically. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Now, um, there have been many discussions, James, um, in the ant keeping uh, world where, um, you know, there's kind of a debate on the shipment of live ants from one geographical area to another, you know, that a species is not native to. Um, what are your thoughts about such practices um, of relocation and the impact, if any, on the receiving environment? Well, I, I, you know, uh, that's a difficult question to answer, I, I would say. Uh, um, in a lot of ways, transferring those types of uh, species when you don't know if they could survive in the wild um, could be dangerous. But then when you're transferring something really tropical that has no ability to survive in, like, where I live, where it can be very cold, it might not have the same kind of impact. Um, but I do think it should be, uh, you, to do that kind of uh, work, it has to be very responsible and you have to know which species uh, can be transferred without doing any harm to the natural ecosystem. Excellent. Um, I also wanted to ask, out of the 89 species, in your opinion, um, which of them um, are invasive? Like, arrived through importing or by other means? Uh, Amazingly, only one species is invasive in Alberta, and 
it's not even really invasive as much as uh, just introduced. It's uh, the feral ant, which is uh, a well-known uh, ant that is only habitate in human houses or buildings. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not actually found in uh, the wild, but actually lives in human buildings and property. So Excellent. you only find it in like apartment buildings and near restaurants and stuff like that. I see. And they're a small ant, no? Very they're very small ant, yeah. They uh, and they, they don't have they don't compete with any of the other ants in Alberta. Oh, okay. Is it because of the fact that they've been able to make a niche out of living in the city and, and, and with people and in the Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they they've been able to form a their own uh, habitat in uh, human habitation. So they just live off of scraps of food that people uh, leave on the ground and stuff like that. I see. Excellent. Now, um, I understand you also are associated with AntWeb.org. You work closely with them. Um, actually, when the CEO of the Ants Canada Ant Store mentioned you, we remembered your name from several places. <laughs> You're everywhere. Um, so I went to the AntWeb.org and clicked on the Alberta tab, and there you were. So how did that's huge? Like, how did you uh, become associated with AntWeb.org? Well, uh, AntWeb uh, offers the Ant course. It's uh, a course that they do every year, um, and it helps uh, striving myrmecologists learn how to identify ants and how to use key ants and properly. Uh, uh, curate ants, mm -hmm. and so I took that course uh, two years ago, and uh, um, I met uh, the people who run AntWeb, Brian Fisher, and and the other curators. And um, because I was working in Alberta and they didn't have anyone from Alberta, um, they offered uh, me the curator status to uh, help them expand their uh, knowledge and uh, everyone else's knowledge. Excellent. That's uh, that's great. Now. Um now, Alberta, it, that geographical area, it, is it special in terms of, like, biodiversity and, and like, sp the species there? Is, is Alberta part of some geographical, I guess, kind of, like, region that's special? Well, I think uh, when we start looking at Alberta uh, <clears throat> and comparing it to other regions, um, it uh, has a lot of diversity in habitat structures because you have mountains, to the west, like leading into the foothills, and then you have parklands, which is aspen forest, and you have the boreal forest to the north, and then the prairie to the south. So we have a lot of uh, geographical regions that allow for a, a high diversity of ants. Um, that being said, um, because we didn't know that there was this, that many species found in Alberta, um, Saskatchewan and uh, Manitoba could have just as many species, and it's just we haven't been doing any research to find out if they do or not. So um, it, Alberta is very diverse, but it doesn't mean that it's unique in its diversity. I know Alberta is affected by the Chinook, and when that causes, it's a phenomenon that's caused by, is it uh, warm currents passing over the mountains, or how does that work? Uh, I don't know the exact uh, uh, science behind it, but it is a, a warm wind coming from the west that uh, will come over the mountains and uh, warm up the uh, colder air. Yeah, I see. And, and it causes like a huge fluctuation in temperature in such a short yeah, time. Yeah, from like minus 20 to plus, uh, into the plus uh, category in a matter of uh, hours. That's amazing. Now, um, we've been, uh, you know, putting a lot of focus on um, hibernating ants. Now, do you find, how does that affect the hibernation process of the ants in Alberta? Do they actually wake up and come out during Chinook, or are they still, or are they just used to, you know, that whole climate craziness? Um, you know, truthfully, there hasn't been a lot of research done on the habitat. Uh, the, the hibernation uh, habits of ants, and so it, it, that's a good question that hasn't been uh, looked into, and I actually don't know. Uh, there's just so much stuff, and, or so much uh, information that we don't know about ants that live in Alberta that uh, we could research that is needed to be done. Right, great. Yeah, because I understand you guys can go up to as high as like plus 12, plus 10, 
um, in the dead of winter. <laughs> but when yeah. just just the day before it was minus twenty. Um, mm. It's really cool. Now, um, so uh, you are a student, a master student at the University of Alberta. Yeah. Um, and uh, forgive me by saying this, but you're very young, and it's very you're, it's kind of it's very inspiring to um, all of us young people who might possibly want to pursue a career in myrmecology um, mm -hmm. or, or biology. Now, what exactly is it that you, you are studying? Um, I study, right now I'm studying the Habitat Associations of Ants in the sand hills of uh, central Alberta. And the sand hills are uh, a really sandy soil area that's uh, covered by jack pine forest. And so I'm looking at what types of ants are associated with what types of habitat in those areas. So I'm looking at canopy cover and vegetation cover and stuff like that. Great. Excellent. Now, um, is the studying intensive? Is there a lot of field work? Um, and do you aspire to continue w with a career working with ants? Yeah, uh, the field work uh, was very intensive. We I spent about from mid-May to the start of September um, almost every day in the field. And then... Uh, we would walk kilometers a day setting out uh, traps and uh, uh, taking habitat uh, uh, information down. And then uh, once I'm done my master's, I do hope to continue studying ants in a PhD setting. So, yeah. That's great. Excellent. Now, um, uh, just quickly uh, about the traps that you mentioned. Yeah. What is an ant trap and how does it work? Well, it, they're called... Uh, pitfall traps. A lot of uh, science, a lot of in, in, entomologists use them, and they're they're little uh, cups you put in the ground, and the ants come and fall into them. I see. And then, they, and then, sadly, we have to kill them. They die in the trap. But uh, it allows us to uh, measure the diversity of the area without affecting uh, uh, the sampling technique. It's random sampling, so it allows for us to randomly sample uh, an area properly. I see. So you don't actually go digging into a nest, or? Um, well, not not for the the sampling type. I, I do do that on my own to uh, expand which what species I know are around, and just for my own information and fun. But uh, to to get the proper uh, sampling data, I have to use the traps to give a, a good random sample. I see. That's interesting. Now, um, what sorts of jobs, James, are available out there to those wanting to pursue a career um, as mer a myrmecologist? Um, well, uh, that, that's a good question. Uh, a lot of people uh, do, uh, consider entomologists important for a lot of different things. One is uh, you can always be a researcher, so you just continue researching and expanding our knowledge on, on ants. Um, there are a lot of uh, businesses that uh, want to uh, use ants to uh, maybe expand on, uh, on antibiotic uh, characters or uh, maybe on uh, using ants as uh, fertilizers or uh, increasing biodiversity in some areas. Um, I know in Madagascar they're using ants as a biodiversity measurement, so the diversity of ants is used as a diversity to measure the rest of the diversity in those yeah. areas. And so that's important as a conservation uh, standpoint. Um, and then a lot of companies, um, ants are considered pests a lot of times, so a lot of companies want to know how to get rid of ants. And so that is another mm -hmm. way of uh, going into, the, into uh, a job uh, wise. Excellent. So, stu so studying ants is actually very, very practical. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, we also ran across your name <laughs> because in our memory, we remembered that there was um, a James Glacier who had ordered one of our habitat nests in the past. So yeah. we went into our folder of invoices and found you. And uh, it was so interesting. So you have, you're you an owner of an Ants Canada habitat nest. Is that what you... Yep. Yeah. Yep. And what species are you keeping in there and how are they doing? <laughs> um... Well, right now they're in hibernation. Yep. Um, uh, but uh, I'm keeping uh, Myrmica alaskensis. It's uh, just a common Myrmica species from uh, around here, and uh, I think they're doing good. I haven't uh, really uh, checked on them lately because they are uh, hibernating. Yep. But that's, 
at the moment when I'm eating. Excellent. No, and they're stinging species, aren't they? Uh, actually, this this uh, species doesn't sting very often. They they're more uh, they do have a stinger, but they don't seem to sting very often. So. Wow. And are they polygynous? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I have, uh, there's three queens in my colony. Amazing. That's totally great. You know, uh, it's totally amazing that uh, you are making huge waves. Um, you know, as um, young as you are, it's uh, really inspiring, and your story definitely will inspire our viewers, and um, it really means a lot to all of us that uh, you agreed to participate in this interview with us, James. What advice do you have for young people wanting to pursue a career in entomology or myrmecology? Well, I think I think one of the, the best uh, ad advice that I can give is to just uh, always pursue what you love and uh, always continue expanding on your horizons and what you want to learn and don't be afraid to ask questions and uh, to read about what you you want to learn and uh, just always work as hard as possible to do what you want to do. Words of wisdom. This has been such a great interview. Thank you so much, James, uh, for participating again. And uh, we at the Ants Canada Ants Store wish you the best of luck in all your endeavors in your school and, uh, and in your uh, very promising career. Thank you for having me. Well, there you have it, guys. That was James Glacier from the University of Alberta reporting live from Edmonton. Hope you enjoyed this interview and uh, stay tuned for the next interview. Thanks, guys. And we're back. Big thank you to James Glacier uh, for uh, speaking with us and sharing with us on his thoughts on uh, working in the field and, uh, and all of that. It's wonderful to always hear success stories like that, especially um, when young people are, you know, making waves and uh, just doing what they love, right? Now, I find that kind of neat that uh, he's got a um, habitat nest. Now, speaking of habitat nests, we uh, wanted to debut our newest color of habitat nest. Now, we have black, as you know, and we have beige. But now we have uh, our newest color, which is... Uh, red! Oh, it looks so spectacular. I know it's kind of reflecting now, but it's, um, it's really neat. We uh, thought of... Uh, adding red to our roster because um, we uh, we were just inspired by the you know the I guess the landscape of you know the Arizonas you know the orangish red sand and rocky stuff um, and uh, and so we decided to create um, a red formicarium for uh, for a little bit of variety uh, to our habitat nest series. And um, <clears throat> it's really great. Now, I uh, I personally really like the red. It turned out wonderful when we created our first prototype. It was just so, so exciting. Now, you know, speaking of the Ants Canada Ant Store, it's been 